happiness among my souvenirs. Everybody's somebody's fool. Where the boys are mean that uh, our next guest can only be. Will you welcome her now? She's the source of a new album called Connie Francis Sings the Songs of Les Reed. Miss Connie Francis. <laughs> How many records have you sold, in fact, now? I wish I knew so I could get some royalties on them, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I've sold, they tell me, about 52 million records up, um, in the world, but I don't know exactly. Uh, some press agent probably made that up. <laughs> Can I tell you what a great show you have? I really mean that everyone is himself on the show. I think, I think probably more so than any of the other shows, and I don't know why this is true. But okay. people's true personalities come out on this show, and I think it's just great. Well, that's really marvelous of you to say I really so. I, I, I must say, that's the truth. That's really super of you to say so. I, I must say that the joy of sitting here and, and listening to people is just vast, and, and people saying things that they haven't said before, of course, is is doubly thrilling. But I mean, it, that's the joy of sitting here. Is the, the joy of the joy of listening and so on. Who, who are you most... Who, did you, do you have someone, a patron saint, a, a person who gave you your first break, as it were, your big... A real saint or... No, not just a real man. Uh, my dad, who, who picked most of my hit songs... And did who, he? And who chose my, uh, my first hit record, which was Who's Sorry Now, and I thought it was very square. <laughs> I didn't want to record the song. It was written in 1923. And I would say um, Dick Clark, because Dick Clark was the, was the first uh, person who believed in my recordings and started to, to play them. And before that, I mean, nothing very much happened. I had 12 Bond records in a row and... Uh, really? Yeah. And did, did his Sorry Now not just catch on straight away? No. It was, out, it was released four months and it died like all the others. And then when um, Dick Clark started to play, the record, it became a, a success. Which is your favorite <coughs> of all the songs? 
That I that I recorded? Yeah. Mama. Mama's my favorite. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, why? Because it reached me, and I think it reached more more people than any record I ever made. And it was personally a special song to me. My mother's out in the audience. Really? Where? And the lady with the green dress. Hello. Welcome. What's your favorite of Connie's songs? Is it the same one? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. I can't think why. It's very nice having you here today. Well, my, my mother was on a television show on, on the... May I, well, I, I can mention Mike Douglas. I was on the Mike Douglas show with me one afternoon, and she cooked. She's the world's greatest cook, really. And she cooks for the whole world, you know. And she did so great, and she got more fan mail than I got from the show. They wanted her recipes. So about a month later, I was going to do the show again. I was driving to New York, and I said, Mother, I'm doing the Mike Douglas show again uh, on Monday or Tuesday. So she said, what should I cook? I said, you weren't invited. <laughs> I don't want that kind what of competition. Did what did you cook on the Mike Douglas show? Uh, Eggplant parmesan. Pardon? Eggplant parmesan. Very good. Well, we'll pass on any further requests for the recipe to, to Mike. He's got his own cookbook now. You ought to put... put uh, he, she put is your in it. You're in it. Mm -hmm. You're in, the, in Mike's cookbook. Oh, that's marvelous. <laughs> Tell me, and I suppose we ought to ask, your, ask your, your mother this rather than you. You have been a lady at the top for longer than many, you know, who retire or whatever after a year or two. How great is the strain on you as a woman? Not, uh, not so much anymore because I've learned uh, that life isn't an interruption to a career. And there are many things uh, that I've always wanted to do and never had a chance to do, and I'm doing them now. I'm not working quite so uh, hard as I used to. I work maybe four or five months a year now, and the rest of the time I do things that I en enjoy doing. For instance, this Christmas was the first Christmas that I uh, had free in uh, 12 years. And uh, usually every Christmas I was working in Miami Beach, and this time I, I vacationed in Miami mm -hmm. Beach and I wore, I bought a blonde wig, and I figured I would be an average citizen. And, and I had such funny things ha happening. What, what sort of things? Uh, when I was checking into the hotel, there were about seven women in the lobby. <laughs> and I came down with about six or seven people, so we had a great deal of luggage, all different kinds of luggage. And there were seven women out in front, and they said, I think she's coming out of the car now. And they had expected that I was going to arrive. And one of the women said, my goodness. You would think that someone in her position would have matching luggage. Look at that luggage. Nothing matches. <laughs> <laughs> and then in standing in the lobby, a woman came up to me and she said, Oh, may I tell you, you are my favorite. You are definitely, would you do me a favor? If you ever run into your ex-husband, Eddie Fisher, say hello for me because I like him too. <laughs> and then another woman came up to the pool area and she said to me, Can I tell you something from the bottom of my heart? glued. I used to be glued to my television set every time you appeared with the Mouseketeers. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave her Annette Funicello's autograph and she was delighted. And these things happen. And people are really amazing. When, uh, a, woman, a woman came and <laughs> approached me and she said to me, for myself I would never ask because I really don't go in for this sort of thing. But my daughter would kill me if I didn't come home with your autograph. So I said, well, what's your daughter's name? And I'll sign it to her. And she said, Zelda. So as I was signing the girl's name, Zelda, the woman's lady friend approached her, and she said, come on, Zelda, we're late. How are you? <laughs> 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 oh, funny thing. People are marvelous, though. That's right. They really and, are great. And do you find or do you recognize yourself in, all the, in the stories written about you, the things written about you in the fan magazines? No. Are they always true? Well, my mother has a fit every time something appears in the paper because she really takes it very seriously. Uh, and I told her, and I told all my aunts and my uncles, you see, sometimes they don't print what you say. So to prove it, I had my mother and my aunt attend an interview one day for a fan magazine and I just wanted to show them that all of these things that they read weren't true all the time. So the interviewer said to me, uh, 
Ms. Francis, how were your parents with you when you were growing up? Were they liberal? And I said, well, no, really, my father was very strict and my mother really a, a, a little bit too strict, I guess, uh, for today. And that was the end of the question. The name of the article in the fan magazine was, My Father Kept Me a Prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a picture of my mother and my father and myself sitting at the kitchen table, except that I was behind bars in the picture. They had drawn bars <laughs> in front of them. <laughs> and, and that proved, you know, that you really can't... That's, uh, that's a great example so of those sensational amazing. front pages. And uh, there was one the other day that someone showed me which said, How Liz and Dick Make Love. Oh, my. Eight pages of pictures, it said. Oh and you turn inside, and it was eight pages of stills from Cleopatra. That's oh all it was, of scenes from Cleopatra. You know, they do that all a the time. A little sensational. Slightly. You've got a sensational song for us. What is it? This is my song. It's a great number. Connie Francis, this is my, this is my song. <laughs>